do more than merely condemn expressions and acts of racism. We must dig deeper and we must act. And racism is not a common exercise. Racism is a complex cultural phenomenon. Combating it demands action every day, at every level. A number of observers have sadly concluded that our world is entering in a post-enlightenment area. Era. The values of the Enlightenment, the primacy of reason, tolerance, and mutual respect are slipping away. In their place, we see growing nationalism, populism, xenophobia, white supremacy, and even neo-Nazism. And racism is the beating heart of this irrationality. We also see racist and or discriminatory dimensions in growing anti-Semitism, anti-Muslim hatred, the mistreatment of some minority Christians and other forms of intolerance and xenophobia around the world. In this ideological battle, we must assert our common values, the values of equality, non-discrimination, mutual respect, values that, that are deeply linked to the affirmation of human rights. There is also a strong social and economic dimension to racism and xenophobia. We see it in limited opportunities for education and employment, access to health care and justice. And the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed these inequalities and represents a damning indictment of systematic prejudice and discrimination. In some cases, mortality rates are as much as three times higher for marginalized groups. Fault lines often run along racial and ethnic lines, and the impact of the pandemic is compounded by intersecting forms of discrimination, such as gender, age, class, caste, religion, disability, sexual orientation, as well as minority economic and legal status. Those already left behind are being left even further behind. Excellencies, as we strive to recover from the pandemic and build a better world, we need to forge a new social contract based on inclusivity and sustainability. And that means investing in social cohesion. The society is becoming even more multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multicultural. We need greater political, cultural and economic investments in inclusivity and cohesion to harness the benefits of diversity rather than perceiving it as a threat. All groups need to see that their individual identities are respected while feeling that they belong as valued members of society as a whole. Advancing equality for all also means transparency, equal access to services, and meaningful participation, including for the isolated and marginalized. It means accountability and justice with no discrimination. And it means leaving our comfort zones and recognizing and addressing our own underlying biases. Mesdames et messieurs les représentants, J'ai par conséquent demandé que des mesures soient prises pour détecter, prévenir et combattre les cas de racisme et de discrimination raciale au sein de l'Organisation des Nations Unies. L'année dernière, j'ai lancé une campagne de dialogue et d'action visant à lutter contre le racisme et à promouvoir la dignité de toutes et de tous au sein de l'organisation. Ces activités sont supervisées par l'équipe spéciale pour l'éradication du racisme et la promotion de la dignité de toutes et tous à l'ONU. L'équipe spéciale élabore actuellement un plan d'action stratégique à long terme pour promouvoir la diversité et l'inclusion. بہت سے منفی پہلو ہیں جبکہ ان کا مزید کہنا ہے کہ مختلف معاشروں میں ہم آہنگی پیدا کرنے کے لیے نسل پرستانہ سوچ کا خاتمہ ضروری ہے اقوام متحدہ کے سیکیٹری جنرل انتونیو گوتریز کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں یہ اقوام متحدہ میں کانفرنس کا انعقاد کیا گیا ہے جو زینو فوبیا اور ریسزم پر منعقدہ ہے اس سے پاکستان کے مستقل مندوب منی رکھنم نے بھی خطاب کیا اس کانفرنس میں جبکہ اقوام متحدہ کے سیکیٹری جنرل انتونیو گوتریز اس کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں کرونا کی وبا کی وجہ سے پیدا ہونے والے مختلف چیلنجز کے حوالے سے منیر اکرم نے اپنے خطاب میں کہا کہ ہمیں ان چیلنجز سے مل کر نمٹنا ہوگا سماجی اور معاشی تفریق ختم کر کے ہی پیداوار کے پائیدار ترقی کے اہداف حاصل کیے جا سکتے ہیں اس وقت اقوام متحدہ کے سیکیٹری جنرل انتونیو گوتر اس کانفرنس سے خطاب کر رہے تھے ناؤ 
from the Foreign Minister of Pakistan, His Excellency Maktoum Shah Mahmoud Qureshi. Please play the video. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to join you today for this special event on the theme of racism and inequality. Mr. President, reducing systematic inequality and eliminating racism, including its contemporary manifestations, are at the heart of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The SDGs are visionary in their stated commitment to leave no one behind. They aim to bring an end to all forms of discrimination and inequality, including racism. Yet, racial equality is under attack globally. Expressions of racial hatred, religious supremacy and violent nationalism have moved from the fringe to political mainstream. From resurgence of violent nationalist groups to racist and xenophobic attitudes of politicians, from pervasive Islamophobia and racial profiling of Muslims, to excessive use of force by law enforcement authorities against people of African descent, the assault on human dignity of millions around the world has reached alarming proportions. Even in our own region, hateful political rhetoric, incitement to violence against vulnerable ethnic and religious groups has resulted in discriminatory citizenship laws, attacks on places of worship, and repeated state-sponsored pogroms against minorities. All the while, brutal occupation and suppression of peoples struggling for their right to self-determination continues unabated. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has further intensified these divisions, reinforced racial discrimination and aggravated existing inequalities. It has disproportionately impacted racial minorities, making them more vulnerable to extreme poverty, unemployment, and higher rates of infection and mortality. They have also been subjected to harsh treatment by law enforcement in the context of emergency measures and to unequal access to health care and social protection. The pandemic also amplified racist and xenophobic sentiments with the popular calls to deport, quarantine and segregate migrant workers, most of whom belong to developing countries. In some instances, people belonging to racial, religious or ethnic minorities have been subjected to hate speech and vile conspiracy theories accusing them of spreading the virus. All this has happened in our region as well. Undoubtedly, we are all confronted by another virus, the deadly pandemic of hate. Mr. President, so far too long, structural racism and systemic inequalities have denied people their fundamental rights, including their right to development. People of African descent, in particular, continue to endure intolerable discrimination in many parts of the world. It is vital for the international community to address the structural drivers of racial inequality, including those rooted in the history of legacy of colonialism. The General Assembly has recognized that the remaining vestiges of alien and colonial domination foreign occupation, racial discrimination, apartheid, and neo-colonialism in all its forms continue to be among the greatest obstacles to the full emancipation and progress of the developing countries 
and all the peoples involved. The Secretary General has also stated that colonialism creates vast inequalities within and among nations. While the wave of decolonization swept the world in the aftermath of the Second World War, the legacy of colonialism is still reflected in international economic and political system. We continue to witness this in the discriminatory global trade and financial structure. It is also visible in the economic and social injustices and non-inclusive nature of global financial institutions. Discriminatory migration and employment policies fueled by xenophobia and racism continue to be tolerated in many societies. Mr. President, two decades after the Durban Conference, the recognized nexus between racism, xenophobia, and related intolerance and timely achievement of SDGs has to be acknowledged and addressed. It is indeed an appropriate time for the international community to recommit upholding the fundamental principles of human rights and to guarantee substantive equality for all in line with 2030 agenda. In this regard, I would like to propose the following. One, the inclusion of objectives of promoting racial, ethnic, and religious equality, redressing historic inequalities and injustices of the past as part of the concept of building back better for COVID-19 and achieving the SDGs. Two, adoption of action plans by all concerned states to ensure equality and improve the economic situation of people of African descent and other oppressed ethnic and religious groups facing discrimination. Three, increasing the representation of people of African descent in global institutions and leadership positions. Increasing and for the representation of building a global alliance against the rise and spread of Islamophobia positions, anti-Semitic and other violent nationalism and racist groups. Mr. President, extremism and systemic other racial discrimination and exclusions are threatening the very political, legal and moral foundations of the civil states. We must collectively address the threat posed by racial and other forms of inequality as declared in the 2030 agenda. We must leave no one behind and other forms of inequality as declared in the 2030 agenda. Mr. President, the conference of the Shah Mahmood Qureshi conference is a conference of the Shah Mahmood Qureshi conference. Mr. President, the Shah Mahmood Qureshi conference is a conference of the